I've been all over the world and driven a huge amount of fun things from ice driving in the Alps to off-roading in the Namib Desert. But today is something a little bit different. I'm here in the fine state of Minnesota to drive a tank. About 70 miles outside of Minneapolis is the town of Kosota, home to the aptly named Drive a Tank. Anyone with an interest in having a go in some serious military hardware spanning almost the entire history of tanks, but without the desire to actually enlist, Drive a Tank can give you the opportunity to drive, shoot and crush with some legendary metal. And just to get this out of the way, some of these are tanks, some of these are self-propelled guns, I get it, tank nerds, there is a difference. And although I do know which is which, for the sake of simplicity, I'll just be calling them tanks, as tanks is shorter than self-propelled gun. So that saves time, which I now have to do, as I've spent so much time explaining why I've called them all tanks. First up was the Abbott. 16 and a half tons of British metal powered by a 240 brake horsepower Rolls-Royce engine. These are all genuine ex-military vehicles. The weapons may have been decommissioned, but they still look, sound, and crucially drive exactly how they should. And after some instruction on how to actually do it, I was away. Here we go. So this may have as much horsepower as a sporty little MX-5 or something like that. It weighs as much as a house. So we're not looking at zero to 60 times here. some time getting used to drive something using levers instead of a steering wheel, but as soon as you find your feet it's hard to get that smile off your face. There is something pretty awesome about looking over your shoulder and seeing a cannon protruding from your ride, I'm not going to lie. With my first tank experience in the bag, the next challenge would be to learn to drive using a periscope, this time in an APC. The controls would be the same, but instead of my head sticking out of the vehicle, I'd be tucked safely inside looking through a letterbox-sized periscope to see where I was going. Now completely sealed inside, I could start to appreciate how cramped and tight it is inside these kinds of vehicles. Creature comforts are virtually zero, with a couple of minimal padded areas, your only respite from the hard, bare metal. Now it was time to combine those experiences I'd had and take it to the next level with this, the Sherman. This World War II legend might not have been the largest piece of hardware on show that day, but it certainly was the most iconic. Arguably one of the most famous of its brethren, the profundity of this machine isn't lost on you as you climb on board. 
Where everything else I'd driven that day had had an automatic gearbox, the Sherman had the mother of all manual boxes. Once I had wrestled it into gear and pulled away, it was hard to take in the fact I was driving a machine that 70 years prior had been tearing through Europe in droves, kicking ass and taking names. Did I mention that all the weapons on these tanks had been decommissioned? Well, that's technically true, but the guys that drive a tank are pretty handy fellows, and they have completely rebuilt the cannon on the Sherman, and with it, their own custom shells. So, if you're inclined, you can actually shoot it. And boy, was I inclined. The shells are made from a secret combination of ingredients that make quite the impact, but none of the destructive damage. Switching to the gunner's position in the tank gives a whole new perspective on the experience. Driving around, hunting for targets, aligning your sights and then actually firing a giant cannon and watching the shell explode in a safe cloud of powdered smoke. I'm sure it wouldn't take much to convince you how fun it was. Start to fire. Firing. After a full day of learning the amazing history of these incredible machines and getting to actually experience what it feels like to control these metal monsters, I could have left a very happy camper. However, there was one more machine I fancied having a go in before I left. Behold the behemoth that is the Chieftain. The Sherman may have been iconic, but the Chieftain looks like it could eat it for breakfast. And what do you do with a 25 foot long, 55 ton tank, well, you use it to crush a car, of course. Turns out, it's excellent at it. So now I can officially strike driving a tank off my bucket list. And thanks to the guys here at Drive a Tank, not only have I driven an Abbott and fired shells from a Sherman at a moving target, I've managed to crush a Buick with a Chieftain, something I definitely wasn't expecting to add to my list today. And not only that, I get a souvenir in the number plate and the keys to the ride. I'm not entirely sure that's as useful as they think it is, but still a fantastic day has been had. And driving a tank, is an experience that I can wholeheartedly recommend. <laughs>